Greetings viewers and thank you for tuning in today to this episode of Eric the Car Guy. Now when I drive dad's truck down the road, I notice that I can go straight but the steering wheel sort of, you know, can, I can move it back and forth. It's still really loose. Uh, I've replaced the inner and outer tie rods. I've also got new ball joints up front and in fact the whole suspension up front has been renewed yet I still have this loose steering. So there's only one thing left in this chain and that is the rag joint which is the connection between the steering column and the uh, power steering box. So I'm gonna replace that today in hopes that it tightens up my steering. So if you have a GMT 400 or an OBS truck uh, that has loose steering, this video may be of use to you. I'm not gonna lift the truck up at all and I don't believe you need to in order to replace this part. Uh, on my truck, there is this plastic cover over top of the rag joint, which will be down underneath here. In order to get to it, I'm gonna have to remove this part of the steering column there is a fastener right up here, a through bolt, that I'm going to remove. And then this uh, steering column can collapse a bit, so I'll be able to push this in and move this plastic cover up and out of the way so that I can uh, release it from the power steering box down here. And I'm going to start with this through bolt. It is a 15 millimeter. Now, one thing I've done, and I probably should mention this now, one thing I've done before I've gotten to this point is I made sure the steering wheel was straight uh, when I pulled it in so that when I put all this back together, uh, the hope is the steering wheel is still straight. But uh, make sure your steering wheel is straight before you get started on this. And you just pull this through. I have to keep my parts together. I'm going to do that. Set these aside. How easy this next part is going to be, well, that's, that's debatable, but the idea is to pull the column back in this direction, push it down, and get it up off of the uh, steering mechanism. I've had mine apart fairly recently, so hopefully this won't be too terrible, but you can use like a mallet or something like that. I'd be careful of using a hammer, you don't want to damage it. No steering! Do not drive it. This plastic cover is sort of hooked around this top power steering line here. It's just plastic, you can pull it up and move it back. And you can see my rag joint is basically totally wasted. And we'll get a better look at it when it's out, but I can already see what the problem is. It's pretty weak. You gotta take this bolt all the way out be the next step. This guy's an 11 millimeter. I thought it might be, but 11 is like a weird size. You just, you don't see it often. And I probably don't have to take the bolt all the way out, but I'm going to. Well, actually I might. There might be a, a slot in the top of the steering box, come to think of it. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. Right, this looks like it's got some Loctite on it. Now I'm gonna see if I can pry that up off the steering box. This is what I'm referring to. So when this bolt is in here, it sort of fits in this area and locks it into place. So it'll never come off with this bolt in there. So make sure you take this bolt out. Here's my new rag joint and I will link this in the description for you. I just pull this out to extend it. Now this one is, I believe, yeah, it's riveted on for now, but you can, sort of see that there's like rivet heads here. So I'm gonna need, to, this is where I'm gonna bolt the new part onto. So I will need to grind these rivets off and get these out. Actually, it's probably gonna be easier to do it on this side. But I mean, even here, you can see a lot. And why, why do they do this joint? Well, when you go over bumps and things, the entire suspension is jiggling and moving around and they're trying to avoid transmitting that up to the steering wheel for you. So this is, consider it something of a, a shock absorber, if you will, so that as you do go over bumps and things, not all of that is transferred up to the steering wheel. So that's why this is here. But you can clearly see that over time, they get a little worn and it's basically just like the same kind of stuff a tire is made out of. I have my safety glasses on. I'm gonna use my cutoff wheel. Um, these are the guys I'm going after here. Might do something similar to what I did uh, when I did the rivets on the leaf springs and just sort of cut the top and then use my air chisel to take it the rest of the way. 
I suppose you could also uh, drill them if you needed to. But whatever you do, this needs to come out. Why does it seem like I have no air pressure today? Like none. Seriously? I'm gonna go check my air pressure situation. I'll be right back. Eh, maybe it's cold. I don't know. Were you just being that guy, aren't you? These have to come out. <laughs> How you get them out? Well, do not damage the steering shaft when you do. That's, that's the advice I will impart to you now. Finally. I can't really come in here to cut this rivet off. At least I don't think I can. Uh, that's kind of loose there. Why is it not loose on that side? I'm gonna cut these off flush and then try to drive them through. Finally. I got that piece out. All right, I'm good with that. Well, now obviously I need to fasten this to the column. I wanna make sure that I get this on relatively the same as it was when it was on the truck. So if memory serves, this column was up in the truck like this, because the square part of this thing, part of this bolt that passes through here, went through like this. And then I tightened this up at the top. So this was in the truck like this. And this is important because I wanna get this on here in such a way to where I can still get to the bolt head. So if it was in the truck like this, then the bolt head, like this side is the threaded side, and this side is where the bolt would go through. So it would theoretically go together like this. If you're wondering why I'm not making much of an effort to clean this up, it's gonna get covered. I don't believe that's going anywhere. That looks a lot better than what was on there, doesn't it? But I made sure that the bolt was sticking out roughly the same amount on both sides. By the way, this is master splined. And what I mean when I say that is, I don't know if you'll note, like there's a big flat spot up here that you see, like there's all these gear teeth and then there's this flat spot. In other words, this can only go on one way. So it's master spline. Don't be thinking you can fudge it around because uh, it looks like it only goes on in one direction. I just slid right on there. I'm gonna take a little bit of Loctite and put it on this bolt before I install it. Just a little bit. I don't want this working loose. And there's a lot of vibrations here. I got some red Loctite on there. I don't have a torque spec for this, but you know, tighten it down. Now for the fun, fun part. I think first I'm gonna reposition this plastic piece, get that out of my way. Hopefully I can slide this back up on here.
This had some blue Loctite on it. I'm gonna add a little bit more. With steering components like this, there's, or just suspension components in general, there's potential for vibrations which can, well, work things loose. We don't want that happening. So the whole thing about the steering wheel being straight, well, I suppose that makes it easier to, well, it puts it in the correct location so that you can remove all these parts. So in other words, those bolts and everything's are lined up so you can get them off of there. But that being master splined like that, it's only gonna go on one way. Well, let's drive it. See how good it is now. It's better. Like the truck moves when I do this now, the whole truck is. Whereas before I could do this and it wasn't doing anything. Also, interestingly, when I go over bumps, it's, I don't feel them as much. So I, I used to feel it more in the steering wheel when I was going over bumps, but now I don't. Here's more of what I mean with these railroad tracks. Like I hardly felt that at all through the steering wheel. It's certainly been an improvement. Personally, I feel like the return on investment with this part replacement is pretty stinking high. I mean, yeah, you've got to fight with those rivets a little bit to, you know, either grind them or drill those out. But once you get past that point, you don't need a lift. This isn't that expensive. I'll link it down in the description for you. And the improvement is certainly noticeable. So, you know, just something you might consider if you're trying to tighten up the front end on your OBS or GMT 400 pickup truck. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'll put links in the description to this as well as additional information, tools, and all those kinds of things if you uh, want to check those out down in the description. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, airatthecarguy.com is where I ask you to go, also linked in the description. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with the world. Appreciate it when you do that stuff. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.